Hey guys, Ray again. You'll never believe where I am today. You see the sign behind me? I'm at the Lai Nielsen Tool Works and we're about to take a tour of the shop and the showroom. This showroom is unique because you can actually test out the tools before you buy them. So let's take a look. All right guys, we're in the showroom here, the Lai Nielsen Tool Works showroom where you have tools that you can actually try out and see if you like them, see how they fit. Later on in the video, I'm gonna show you an interview that I had with Mr. Thomas Lai Nielsen himself very informative video very easy to relate to i had a great time here saw the shop you'll see that in a minute but first let's take a look at this incredible showroom where you can actually test drive all the tools so this showroom is unique obviously there are many tools on display including uh Lyad nielsen's signature planes um, but it's not just the display of the tools it's the fact that they are all every single tool that is out in this showroom is there to be handled and to be used there's several pieces of wood and several workbenches these are not toys to be uh, hung on the wall for display in the shop and never touched these are intended to be used and the showroom reflects the fact that you need to find the tool that fits you best not every tool is designed for every person uh, you have a tool for every job and also each tool will fit each individual woodworker differently and that's what I love about this you're not gonna guess is this the right tool for me you get to try it out and feel it and the sheer abundance and variety of tools and beautiful displays in which they are shown in this showroom uh, has not been duplicated I've never seen this anywhere else uh, so I, I will have to say that this has been a wonderful experience if for nothing else to come to the showroom and check it out now the we're about to take a look at the actual fabrication floor where everything is manufactured but uh, it's gonna be pretty obvious I don't want to bore you with the sound of my voice so we're just going to kick in the music enjoy the ballet that is the machine shop floor where everything is made and we'll come back around in a few minutes and have a an interview with Mr. Thomas Lineusen himself. Great guy, uh, really enjoyed myself. Everyone was friendly at, at this facility and um, I recommend that if you're in Maine, please do stop by, say hello and take the tour.
All right, guys, here we are in the showroom, and I'll show you that in a minute. But we got the chance to meet Mr. Thomas Lai Nielsen, and he's going to talk to us about some of the tools that he makes here. Uh, Thomas, how did you get started doing these? Well, my father was a boat builder in a local town here, and I grew up around the shop. Um, guys working there, old, all of them were older men, uh, could make almost anything, so making things seemed to be really natural to me. And after college, I got interested in hand tools. People were looking for hand tools that they couldn't find anymore, and the quality was not what they what it had been. So it was an I interest in something other than what was available. And I started making a first tool in 1991 uh, uh, without knowing really much about metalworking at all. But the next six to eight years was a self-apprenticeship. So you taught yourself um, every aspect of manufacturing along these way. tools? Yeah, starting with um, the pattern of work to make castings. Mm -hmm. and, and did you start making your own castings as well? Uh, not in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning I had a local friend here who um, made the castings, but I did the patterns and I did all the polishing. I had uh, a local shop machine then for the first year, maybe a little more. And, um, and so after the casting part of it, which was the body of the tool, I then um, learned machine. Mm -hmm. I couldn't afford to pay somebody to do that. Um, oh. I, I realized that very quickly. Yes. <laughs> and so I started to learn how to machine um, the, the basics. It turned in later to more complex machining and turning and woodworking uh, to make the handles and knobs. But um, the first couple of years was just very basic work. And um, after I got down the line a little ways, I learned how to heat treat. I had to take that in house um, because uh, a local company was doing it for a while, stopped. And, um, and then I set up an operation here to do heat treating. Um, so it was kind of one thing after another as time went on. 1990 uh, ish. 1991, I bought my first CNC machine, and that was when I was able to produce this uh, tool, which is a long jack knife. It's one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, it has an adjustable mouth here, and um, what I wanted to do with this tool was to make it to a very high level of quality. Uh, really, the CNC was uh, instrumental in being able to do mm -hmm. that in a repeatable way. So we were able to machine the plate in the pocket and get the fit tight so you can almost Yes, it's a very it. tight fit. Yes, yeah, beautiful. And I guess they're match ground together. Yes, they are. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, other design features mm -hmm. in this tool are uh, common to the rest of my tools, which is heavier casting, a thicker blade. In this case, the blade is almost well, twice as thick as the original. Um, larger handles, um, which I try to make you know, a lot more comfortable mm -hmm. to hold on to. Uh, I use a lot of brass and bronze because of the boat building connection primarily. Yes. But um, it's a material that I love. Mm -hmm. It's nice to work with. Uh, it's, it's a warm, beautiful material. Um, it does develop a very beautiful patina. It does. Mm -hmm. So uh, this tool uh, was one when Stanley made it was not a big commercial success. Um, I'm not quite sure why, except for bevel up tools, I don't think were as popular mm -hmm. then. Uh, but because of the changes we've made to it, um, it performs fantastically well. So it's been all of our biggest sellers for ever since I started making it. Uh, it was also the first tool I made in iron. Uh, all the tools I made earlier were uh, in bronze, they were smaller tools. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't yeah, really. particularly want this in bronze, it would weigh yeah. significantly, mm -hmm. which I think is a drawback. Yes. Um, so we choose to make some tools out of, uh, out of bronze still, but they're mostly the smaller ones. We do make a number four bench plane in bronze, that's the biggest, and then we make you know, the smaller ones from there. Um, so the um, 
the iron tools when I started making this, and then I began shortly thereafter with the bench planes, which were not as nice as it was us. Yes, it's very nice. It feels really good in your hand. It's a, it's a beautiful material. Yeah, we use a lot of 954 bronze uh, in our shop. It's got great wear characteristics. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you've noticed the difference between the soles on bronze tools over the cast iron tools. Well, the bronze that we use, which is a manganese, is also very hard, so it wears quite well. I have seen uh, brass tools, <laughs> which um, mm -hmm. you know don't hold up well. No, so soft. Yes. Uh, the material we're currently using is a was switched a few years ago. Um, a slightly different bronze alloy with almost no lead in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's less than half a percent. So it's a little harder to machine, but it's a lot harder, period. So I think the wear characteristics mm -hmm. on that are Much quite nice. good. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah. Yeah, you should try this one yeah. out if you haven't yet. Yes. Um, right ship tool. Yeah, one of the things that my viewers may not know is that at your showroom, people can actually try out all the tools to see how they like them and, and how they work. Yes, that's, a, that's a very nice um, feature to have in your showroom that is not, I've never seen anywhere else. Well, I think it's really important because um, not every tool is the same for every person. So mm -hmm. you have to find the tool that fits you and you're comfortable with, um, like different sizes of bench planes. You, know, you don't need all of them, but uh, you might like a number three instead of a number four. Mm -hmm. Might fit your hands better. How do we? Then you don't know that until you actually try it out. Absolutely. So it's not just the right tool for the job, but the right tool for the person. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, very mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, this is a beautiful, a beautiful plane. And I will tell you that I'm familiar with your tools only from advertising. This is the first time I've ever actually held one in really? hand. Yeah. Um, and uh, the. Craftsmanship is remarkable. It's the tour of the shop, yes. and uh, yes. as you know, we ha I have a machine shop as well. Yeah. Uh, and I was very impressed with the, the level of production, the cleanliness of the shop, the professionalism on the floor, and the quality of the parts that uh, your uh, your guys were also this in stock. Right? Uh, one of the other things I noticed was the quality of the shop. Uh, very clear that quality is a big part of your operation here, and it is part of the culture that everyone is aware of. Yes. Yes. Yeah, many eyes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I was talking to uh, Liz earlier and she says that at any point in time someone may discover a defect. Uh, even there might be a hidden bubble yeah. inside the casting that, that you won't see until you're almost done. Yes. And then those parts are rejected. That's right. Yep. It's, uh, it's, it's an expensive truth. Yes. And that's one of the interesting things about working with castings because um, you know, when you pour liquid metal, mm -hmm. Things can happen that you don't see, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, the customer wants the best quality tool you can have. Yes. So we might be polishing on uh, some of the bronze tools that are completely machined and find defects that uh, we, we just can't use them. They're almost finished. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It doesn't it's happen a lot, but it happens. It happens, yes. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know we see it all the time. You wouldn't expect to have a defect hidden deep inside a raw bar of material. Right, exactly. And uh, I was impressed. You have quite a lot of castings back there. Do My we? guess is uh, you <laughs> you have a regular standing order that comes in. Or? We do. We have a great foundry <coughs> here in Maine that does the iron, and um, we get a shipment from them every week. So we just got one today, um, and we're pretty close to just in time. Okay. We, we do have certain things that are warehouse, but our core tools, basic tools that we really focus mm -hmm. on, uh, we're getting deliveries from the casting, uh, castings from the foundry, and they're going in the shop within a week or two, which is really nice. We do take some of the uh, batch of tools, depending on what tool it is. Uh, after they're finished with the machine shop, we may put some back in the warehouse to finish later. Mm -hmm. So that we get some efficiency on the machining side, but we don't have to do the entire process and do the finishing, which is uh, grinding, polishing, and assembly. And there's a lot of handwork involved in the grinding and the polishing departments. Um, so that's nice if there's a tool that we uh, make a large batch of and put some aside, we're ready, we can finish them at will. But yeah, we use a lot of cast. Well, very nice. I know you're a busy, uh, busy man, and I really appreciate you taking the time 
for the interview and for the tour. It was a pleasure to speak with you. I do have one last question, and that is, um, you started doing this about 38 years ago. One, did you have any idea the, the adventure would take you along this way? And two, could you imagine doing anything else? I had no idea, and I couldn't imagine doing anything else. This is, uh, you know, a long, 38 years a long time, and uh, I get here before anybody else in the morning because I enjoy it. It's a fun, it's you a fun the work job. You Absolutely. <laughs> no one and that's the key. That's exactly right. That's a good oh, that's lesson my father taught me. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you taking time. You're welcome. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to stay up to date on all my future videos. Thanks again.